So we're looking at Maths Functional Skills Level 1. We're looking at the Open Awards uh, paper and we're going to start with the non-calculator section. Okay. Work out 19 squared minus 3 times 5 plus 2. So they're checking our order of operations knowledge here. So by that we're talking about bid mass. So if you remember the B in bid mass stands for brackets. We've got no, no brackets to do. The I stands for indices, so any squared or cubed. We've got a square here. So 19 squared. So I'm going to work this out. So 19 squared means 19 times 19. So 9 times 9. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81. So 1, carry the 8. That was 9 times 9. Then 1 times 9 is 9. And the 8 is 17. Now we're going to move across to the 10. So we put a 0 down here. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 1 is 1. And we need to add these together. So 1 plus 0 is 1. 7 plus 9 is 16. 6 carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So we get 361. So that means that this thing up here, the 19 squared, can be replaced by 361. Now we've still got everything else still to do. So with these, it's best to just do one step at a time. Right, so we've done the indices for bid mass. Now we've got the D for division. No, we've got no division to do. M for multiplication. Yeah, we've got a multiplication here. So that means we're not changing the 361, but we do want 3 times 5. Well, 3 fives, we've got 5, 10, 15. So this is minus 15. And then we've got plus 2. Now, uh, bid mass, the A comes before the S, but with uh, order of operations, that doesn't matter. Addition and subtraction, we just do from left to right. Okay, so we don't do the addition first, just left to right when it's only addition and subtraction. So 361 minus 15, well, let's do that over here. 361 minus 15. 1 minus 5, we can't do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 10 from the 6, so it becomes a 5, and bring that over. So now we've got 11 minus 5, which is 6. 5 minus 1, which is 4. 3 minus nothing, which is 3. So the 361 minus 15 becomes 346, and we've still got the plus 2. And this is nice and straightforward, 346 plus 2. That's going to be 348. Question 2. Calculate 17.89 plus 23.47. Well, let's do this as a column. The fact that they're decimals doesn't matter so long as we line it up. So our units are above our units, our tenths, our hundredths. Everything's lined up. So 9 plus 7 is 16. 6 carry the 1. 8 plus 4 is 12, and the 1 is 13. 3 carry the 1. Bring the decimal point now. 7 plus 3 is 10, and 1 is 11. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, and 1 is 4. So we get 41.36. Now, question 3. 23.1 divided by a thousand. Right, so when we're multiplying or dividing by 10 or 100 or a thousand, the digits stay as they are, but the decimal point moves. So if we're dividing by 100, we're going to be making this number smaller. So we're going to be moving our decimal point to the left. And we've got three zeros, so we're going to move it once, twice, three times to here. Now we've got to fill in this gap here with a zero and a zero at the front. So our answer is 0 0.0231.
question four. Jeffrey records the ages of some people that attend his gym. We've got all the ages here. Fit in this table for Jeffrey's data. So we've got the age split into groups. We've got space for tally. So every time we see a number that's in one of these ranges, we just put a mark. And then we can add those all up to get the frequency. Okay, so I'm going to go through these one at a time and work out where they go in the table. So 26, that's going to go in here, cross it off. 15, here, cross it off. 28, 18, 19, 43. And we're just going to keep working our way. 61, that's in here, through the data. 28. It is easy to make mistakes in these. 25. Well, we've already got one, two, three, four. So the fifth one goes through there. 22. So we start a new group now because we've got a group of five here. 31. 20. 23. 43 down here. 50, you just got to keep checking, 23, when we're going to make another group of 5 that we cross it off properly, so 34, yeah. 27, 1, 2, 3, 4, so another group of 5 there, 39, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 there, and 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, group of 5 there. So we've got 5, 5, 10, here yeah, we've got a group of 5. Here we've got one, two, three, four, and here we've got one, two, three. Okay, so it's always good to check that you've got the same number of values as we started off with. Okay, so I should have moved that up so you can see the 50 is over. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. So we've got a total of twenty-seven. So my frequency here should add up to twenty-seven. 5 and 10 is 15, and 5 is 20, 4, 24, and 3, 27. Good, same number. Okay, right, question continues on next page. So let's have a look. Use this table, as in this table, to plot a bar chart for this data on the graph paper below. Right. Okay, so this is the data we've got to use. All right, so we've got we're going to have our our age going across one way and our frequency across the other. Now you can have the frequency going across, but normally we we have the frequency going up. If you want to do it the other way, that's fine. But I'm going to do the frequency as my y-axis. And that means that we're going to have to have the age across at the bottom. Let's move that bigger age. Now, we need to work out what sort of scale we're going to use here. So by that, I mean, well, a frequency of our different age groups, the highest frequency we've got is 10. So we need to be able to go up to 10 here. So let's see how many boxes we've got. So if we start at 0, or we start at 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, yeah. We've got space to fit 10 in there, so that's fine. You don't have to write all the numbers in on here. So I'm deliberately leaving some out. So long as you've left the right amount of space for them. And age, well, we've got one, two, three, four, five groups. We need to fit that along here. See how many boxes we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Well, if we've got five groups, we could have two boxes for each. That would be ten. If we did three boxes for each, that would be 15, and we had a space for 16. So, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that works. So this can be our zero to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and 50 or over, I'll just put 50 plus. Right, now, we're doing the graph, so we need to use our ruler to get nice straight lines. Let's have a look at the table. 0 to 19, we had a frequency of 5. So 5 is going to be halfway between 4 and 6. So we need that to go across there. Now, for 20 to 29, we had a frequency of 10. So that means we're going to go across like that there. We then had a frequency of 5 for 30 to 39. So we're back down here again. I'm just doing the tops of the bars at the moment. Then we had a frequency of 4 for 40 to 49. And we had 3 in the 50s and over. So 2 and 4, so 3 is going to be here. And a 50 and over is going to be here. Now some people like to have gaps between their bars. I don't, because that means I can be lazy or efficient, depending on how you want to say it. And draw it with fewer lines. I should draw in my x-axis or y-axis up there and x-axis down here. And the only thing that's missing is a title. So we can just call it, what was it? it was about how many people go to the gym? So we can just call it gym attendance. And there's our graph completed. Question five. Let's move it up. Jeffrey's gym has a swimming pool. Jeffrey draws a scale drawing of the swimming pool on the square grid below. What is the actual area of the swimming pool? Okay, well, we know each of these boxes is five meters. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's ten. So if each of those is 5 metres, it's going to be 10 times 5 metres. Well, 10 times 5 is going to be 50. So that's 50 metres across. Now, down this way, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 squares, and again, each square is 5 metres. So 6 times 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 metres. So when we're working out the area, especially of a rectangle, we want length times width. So we're going to do our 50 times 30. So let's move this down a set. Area equals 30 times 50. Now if you want to do it as a column multiplication, that's absolutely fine. Or you could just say, well, let's ignore the zeros. 3 times 5 is 15, then put the two zeros back on. And it was meters and its area, so it's going to be 1500, put the comma in, meters squared. Question six. There are 120 members that attend Jeffrey's gym in total. The gym offer either a silver membership or a gold membership. The ratio of people on the silver membership to gold membership is 3 to 5. So that means that for every 3 people on the silver, there's 5 on the gold. How many people are there on each membership? Right, so whenever we've got ratio, I like to draw a little table. So I'm going to do an S for silver, G for gold, and we'll do a total column. 
So the, we're starting off with the ratio. So we know that for every three silvers, we've got five golds. So if we only had three silvers and five golds, we would have eight in total. But actually, we're told that there are 120 in total. Now, the way things work with ratio is to go from sort of one row up to the next. Everything moves up with the same multiple. So if we know how to get from 8 to 120, we can multiply the 3 and the 5 by the same number. So in other words, what we're saying is what is 120 divided by 8? So we can do that with the bus stop method. 8 into 1 doesn't go. 8 into 12 goes once. 9, 10, 11, 12, so remainder 4. How many times does 8 go into 40? 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. That's 5 times. So in other words, we're saying that to get from 8 to 120, you're multiplying by 15. So we need to do the same for the silver and for the gold. So let's do the silver first, so 3 times 15. 3 fives are 15. Carry the 1. 1 times 3 is 3, add the 1 is 4. So we've got 45 silvers. Now we do the same for the gold, so we want, we'll do the gold over here. Now we want 5 times 15. 5 times 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 1 times 5 is 5, add the 2 is 7. And we can check if we add 45 and 75 together. Well, 40 and 70 is 110, 115, 120. So that all looks good. So how many on each membership? So silver is 45 and gold is 75. Question 7. Geoffrey has a bag of various sports balls. He has seven footballs, three rugby balls and six tennis balls. What is the probability of Geoffrey picking a football out of the bag at random? Right, so when we're dealing with probability, I always like to start with the denominator first. The denominator is looking at the total possible uh, outcomes that we've got. So we've got seven footballs, three rugby balls and six tennis balls. So in total, we've got 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 6 is 16 balls to choose from. So we put that at the bottom. What's the probability of Jeffrey picking a football? Well, we've got 7 footballs. So it's just going to be 7 over 16. That's the end of the non-calculator section. So we go straight into the next part, just to make it clear. Now we can use our calculator. Right. Question 8. David is training for a charity run. As part of David's training, he runs around a field, seen below, so this one here. He aims to run at least 5 kilometres. How many full laps of the field will he need to run? Assume that he can, that he only, oh, sorry, assume that he can only complete four laps. Right, so he's going to run around this field, it doesn't matter where he starts, maybe for argument's sake, let, let's just say he starts there. Okay, so he's going to run along here, up here, all the way around. Now, you can see that two of the distances are missing, we don't know this length or this length. So we need to work them out and put them in. Okay, well, we do know that all of this is 92 metres. And we know that this section is 40 metres. So this is going to be 92 minus 40. So we've got the calculator now. And that gives us 52 metres. Now... 
this length here, this vertical one, well, we know the full vertical distance is 56. This section is 36. So this is going to be whatever's left. So 56 minus 36. Yeah, we can do it with a calculator. And we get 20 metres. Okay, so that means that one lap is going to be 52 plus 20 plus 40 plus 56 plus 92 and then plus 36 to get back to the start. So let's see what all of that gives us on here. It's 52 plus 20 plus 40 plus 56 plus 92 plus 36 and we get 296 meters. Okay. He aims to run at least five kilometers. Well, we've got kilometers here and we've got meters down here. So we, we want to get everything in, in the same units. Well, five kilometers, I know that there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So if we've got five kilometers, it's going to be 5,000 meters. So he needs to run at least 5,000 meters. He knows one lap is 296 meters. So we need how to know how many times or how many of these we need to run to get up to 5,000. So we can do 5,000 divided by 296. And we get 16.89. And it carries on. Uh, but assume that he can only complete full laps. So we need it to be a whole number. Well, if he only runs 16 laps, it's not going to be enough. So we're going to have to go up to the next whole number, which is 17. So needs 17 laps. Or you could put 17 full laps, but 17 laps is fine. Okay, question nine. David records how long it takes him to run five kilometers on five days in a week. He does this for three weeks. He records his times in the table below. In which week were the range of his times the greatest? Well, the range is the biggest or, or the maximum minus the minimum. It's the biggest number minus the smallest. Which week? So we're looking at each week, one at a time. So in week one, what's the biggest number? 22, 32, 33 is the biggest. And what's the smallest? 29. So the range, I'm going to put an extra column, is going to be 33 minus 29. We can do it with a calculator. Which is 4. And we're going to do the same for week 2. What's the biggest? 34 is the biggest and the smallest, 27. So 34 minus 27 is 7. And for week 3, the biggest is 33. What's the smallest number? 28. So 33 minus 28. And we get 5. And they were saying, in which week were the range of his times the greatest? And it's this one. Week two. Right. Uh, okay, question 10. David buys a new pair of running shoes to use for his charity run. The price of the pair of running shoes is £65, but David has a 20% off voucher. How much will the running shoes cost David? Okay, so uh, two ways of doing this. 
I'm going to do it. I'm going to work out the 20% and then take it off. So we want 20% of 65, so that's going to be 20 over 100 times 65. 20 divided by 100 times 65 is 13. So now we need to take that away from the original. So 65 minus 13. which gives us 52 pounds. Now I said there was another way you could do it, and that's to say, well, if there's 20% off, that means that the amount you've got left to pay is going to be 80%. And you could convert that straight into a decimal and say 80% is 0 0.8. So you could just do 0 0.8 times 65, which, don't take my word for it, do check gives you 52. It's a slightly different way of doing it. This may be more of a sort of a level two thing that you want to have a go at uh, practicing that way. So don't worry if, you, if you're not fully comfortable with it. But this is a nice, neat way of doing it instead of having to do the two steps of this. Okay. But there's nothing wrong with, with doing it this way. Question 11. There are 24 members of a church. Two thirds of the members are women. How many of the church members are women? So we want two thirds of, which is times, 24. So with the calculator, well, if we do it with this calculator, two divided by three, eight fours, and then times 24. These calculators, they can go a bit funny sometimes, we just need to round it up to 16, 15.99999. Or to avoid this, do the multiplication first. So do 2 times 24. Oh, so 2 times 24. And then divide it by the 3. And then you get 16. Just be careful with the calculator. Uh, yeah, they're not always great with that. Okay, question... 12. If you're using a scientific calculator, you won't get that problem at all. But most of the time, there's nothing wrong with these simple calculators. You've just got to um, have a bit of practice with them so you, so you know what, what to expect. Delia wants to decorate her square house by putting Christmas lights on two of its sides. Her house is 70 metres wide. To calculate the number of lights she needs, she uses this rule. Total length in metres times it by 6, and then add 50. Lights come in boxes of 80. Each box costs £15.99. Calculate how much it would cost Delia to decorate her house in this way. OK. So, remember, she wanted to decorate two of the sides of her house. It's 17 metres wide, so we're going to need 17 times 2. So 34 metres. Because to work out the number of lights she needs, we need to know the total length. So now we've got it, we've got 34. So we want 34 times 6, and then we're going to add on the 50. So we've still got the 34 times 6 is 204, add on the 50. And we get 254. And that's working out the number of lights. It helps to sort of write this down so we know exactly what it is we're working out. Lights come in boxes of 80. So we need to know how many boxes do we need to get 254 lights. So we can say 254 divided by 80. we get 3.175. Now, it's unlikely you'd be able to buy 0.175 of a box, so we're going to have to buy a round number of boxes. Three boxes wouldn't be enough, 
because it's more than three. So we're going to have to buy four boxes. So we've got four boxes at £15.99 each. And we get £63 and 96p. Question 13. Shauna is baking cookies for 48 people. She uses the following recipe. So we've got a cookie recipe here that serves six people. We've got amount of butter, sugar, flour, and chocolate chips. Shauna has one and three fifths of a kilogram of butter in her fridge. How much more butter does she need to be able to bake the cookies for 48 people? Include the units in your answer. Right, so this is how much butter she's got. What we need to know is how much butter does she need altogether. Then we can take this off of it and see how much more she needs. Now, well, there's different ways of doing this. What I'm going to do, it might feel like a long way of doing it, but I'll show you a shorter way afterwards. So I'm going to say, well, we want to serve 48 people. We know how much butter we need for six people. So what we can do is divide the 225 by 6, because that's going to tell me how much butter I need just for one person. One person. So now if I want it for 48 people, I'm going to multiply that by 48. And we get 1,800 grams. That's for 48 people. Okay, now she's already got one and three fifths of a kilogram. But that's kilograms, we want it in grams. Well, first of all, one and three fifths, let's turn that into an improper fraction. So we multiply the whole number by the denominator, so one times five is five. Add three is eight, so we get eight fifths. An eight fifths of a kilogram, well, a kilogram is 1,000 grams. So if we multiply that by 1,000, we get the weight in grams. So eight divided by five times 1,000, and we've got 1,600 grams. So she, uh, she needs 1,800. She's got 1,600, so if we take that away, the difference should be how much more she needs. So 1,800 minus 1,600, and we get 200, and that's in grams. You could have uh, turned this into kilograms and worked it out as 1.2 kilograms. But I, I, I think it's easier to work with grams because then we don't have to have decimals. Right. Now we're on to question 14. Bob wants to varnish his kitchen floor. The diagram below shows the dimensions of Bob's kitchen floor. Bob's going to give the kitchen floor two coats of varnish. One litre of varnish that Bob buys will cover 5.6 metres squared of floor. The varnish comes in two litre tins, costing £14.95 per tin. Calculate how much it would cost Bob to varnish his floor. Right, well let's start off by working out the area. Because he wants to varnish, so he's covering the inside. So the area is a length times a width, which in this case... 5.05 times 3.2. 
which gives us 16.16 and that's meters squared. Now he's going to give it two coats of varnish. So we've got to double that. So we've got 32.32 meters squared. That's how much he needs. Okay. Now, one litre of varnish covers 5.6 metres squared, but actually, actually the, the tins, there's two litres in a tin. So one tin is two lots of 5.6, which is 11.2 metres squared. So we need to cover 32.32 metres squared. We know one tin will do 11.2 metres squared. So to find out how many we need, we're going to divide. So 32.32 divided by 11.2. We get 2.8857. So let's run it to two decimal places. 8, 8, but this is a 5, so we're going to round up 2.89, uh, and that's going to be tins. Now remember, we can't buy 0.89 of a tin, so we're going to have to go up to the nearest whole number, which is 3 tins. So, 3 tins. They're fourteen pounds ninety-five each, so the total cost is going to be forty-four pounds eighty-five. Question fifteen. The table below shows figures for the number of ticket sales at a museum on one day. So the adults, children, concessions and other are the number of tickets sold. The concession ticket type gives access to the museum to seniors and students. So this is a mixture of seniors and students. The rate, uh, sorry, the ratio of seniors to students who visit the museum on this day was four to three. What percentage of the total ticket sales on this day was seniors? So we need to start off by working out how many seniors there were. And because it's a ratio question, I'm going to draw a table. So we've got seniors and we've got students. And then we're going to have a total. So the ratio of seniors to students is 4 to 3. So if we had 4 seniors and 3 students, we'd have a total of 7. But in fact, the total concessions are 56. So how are we getting from 7 to 56? So in other words, we do 56 divided by 7. Which gives us 8. So that means we need to multiply. So that means we multiply the 7 by 8 to get to 56. So we've got to do the same to the 4 and the same to the 3. So 4, 8 are 32 and 3, 8 are 24. And I'm just going to check 32 plus 24. Well, in fact, let's do it here does in fact give us 56. Okay, so uh, we're only interested in seniors, so we didn't need to work out this student figure, but I like to do it because it just it will highlight if I've made a mistake. But we, we saw that we did a check and it was right. So we've got 32 seniors. They want to know what percentage of the total ticket sales were seniors. So we've got 32 seniors, how many in total? Well, we need to add all of these together. So 231, 105, 
56 and 12 and we get 404 so seniors we've got 32 out of 404 to turn it into a percentage we multiply it by 100 so 32 divided by 404 times 100 and we get 7 point let's do two decimal places if in doubt round to two decimal places but uh, if you are going to round only round at the end of the calculation never round any of your interim calcs okay so we get 7.92% Question 16. Billy weighs 76 kilograms. Billy claims that he weighs more than the mean weight of his friends. The weight of his friends can be seen in the table below. Is Billy correct? Well, the mean, the way we calculate the mean is the total divided by how many or the frequency. So first of all, let's find out what the total weight is. So 75 plus 70 plus 68 plus 80 plus 78 plus 76. And we get 447. And how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 447 divided by 6, we get 74.5 kilograms. He claims he weighs more than them. Well, yeah, we can say, uh, so here 76 is more than 74.5. So is Billy correct? Yes. Question 17. Which of these shapes have exactly two lines of symmetry? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw all of my lines of symmetry on these. So first of all, let's check. Shape A looks like a square, but I'm going to double check, measure it. So this is two and a half centimetres that way. Two and a half. Excellent. So if that's a square, then it's going to have a line of symmetry vertically. Going to have a line of symmetry horizontally. It's also going to have a line of symmetry through that diagonal and a line of symmetry through that diagonal. So one, two, three, four lines. So it's not that one. It's not exactly two, so we can cross it up. What about B? Well, remember line of symmetry, you're splitting the shape into equal halves but with a sort of a mirror line, so like a reflection. So if we split that down there, that would match onto there. What about if we do it through this way as well? Yeah, top onto bottom, that would match. We're not going to have one diagonally because this skinny bit would match on that, that bit. So that's got two lines of symmetry. Okay, so we've definitely got B. It says which of these shapes, there could be more than one. So let's check C, this rectangle. Well, we've got our line of symmetry straight down the middle. And this way. And again, we're not going to have a diagonal one. So actually, it's going to be B and C. Okay, so careful. Usually there's just one right answer, but sometimes there will be the option for, for more than one. Monique eats one quarter of a pizza and Ahmed eats 28% of the same pizza. Who eats the most pizza? Show your working. Uh, right, so how do we want to do this? Well, one quarter is the same as 25%. And we can see that 25% is less than 28%. So who eats the most? Ahmed. 
you could do it slightly differently so we could try and we've got this as a fraction we could turn it into a decimal so we could say let's do it down here one quarter so one divided by four is 0 0.25 And we could turn this into a decimal by doing 28 over 100, which is 0 0.28. Okay, so either or, I, I, I prefer doing it this way. You need to recognize that a quarter is 25%, but really you should be learning some of these. Uh, a quarter is 25%, a half is 50%. Uh, one tenth is ten percent. Really helpful if you can learn a few of those um, fractions to decimals to percentages conversions. Question nineteen. Some army cadets are split up into three teams. The table below shows these results. So Team Alpha's got forty cadets. Team Bravo's got thirty-five cadets. Team Charlie has 15 cadets. Complete the pie chart to display this data. Right, so we want to have all of our cadets shown on here. First of all, let's see how many we've got in total. So we've got 40 plus 35 plus 15. So we've got 90 in total. So this pie chart is going to represent all 90 cadets. And to start us off, I'm going to draw a nice straight line up. just to give us a starting point. Right, we need, to, for us to do a pie chart, we need to know the angles, okay? Now, 40 cadets, that's not 40 degrees, because we'd only end up with 90 degrees in total. And we know that in a circle, we've got 360 degrees. So it's almost like a, a proportional ratio question. We want to get, instead of the total being 90, we want our total to be 360. And, well, if you know 90 degrees is a right angle, or a quarter of a, tri of a circle, so that means that 360 is four lots of that. So, if we multiply each of these by four, we're going to go from the number of cadets to the angles. So that's in degrees. Okay, so 40 times 4 gives us 160 degrees. 35 times 4 gives us 140 degrees. And 15 times 4 gives us 60 degrees. And we can check that 160 and 140, 300 plus 60 is 360. So we know the angles for each of these. Now we need to plot them on here. So to do that, we need our protractor. Here it is. So the first angle we want to measure out is 160 degrees. Now, usually we're used to having our protractor sort of horizontally. But my starting line is vertically, so I'm going to have to do it this way. So I get the crosshairs right in the centre, line my starting line up with zero. So we've got zero here, so I'm going to start on the outside. So zero, ten, twenty, thirty. We want to get up to 160. So we're going to go all the way up to 160, which is here. I'll just put a dot. And then I'll draw my line. So this is going to be Team Alpha. And this is my 160 degrees that we've worked out. Now we want the next section to be 140 degrees. But we're starting from this line this time. So again we get the crosshairs in the centre. But my zero is going to start down here. Uh, let's move up a little bit so we can see this. So we've got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. We're going to go all the way around up to 140, which is about there. So 
So this is team Bravo. So we don't have to work out the last one, but I'm going to check. So Charlie should be 60 degrees. So if I put my protractor on here, line it up, start at zero, go around, and we should find, yet yeah, that line is right on 60 degrees. So we can put Charlie in there. Okay, question 20. Mary uses the following mileage chart to see the distances between various cities. So we've got Leicester, Lincoln, Nottingham, Sheffield. And the way this works, if you want to know how to get from one city to another, you find where they cross. So from Leicester to Nottingham, it would be 26 miles, because that's where they cross. Mary wants to drive from Sheffield to Nottingham, and then from Nottingham to Leicester. She has enough petrol in her car to travel 70 miles. Does she have enough petrol to do these journeys? So in other words, is the total of Sheffield to Nottingham, then Nottingham to Leicester, more than 70? Well, Sheffield to Nottingham. So Sheffield to Nottingham, so it's going to be this number here. It's going to be 37 miles. And then from Nottingham to Leicester, well, is Nottingham, here's Leicester, so we go across and down, so that's going to be 26 miles. So we want 37 plus 26. So we've got a total of 63 miles. She has enough petrol to travel 70 miles. Does she have enough? Yes. Now some people would do the 70 and say, oh, I'll do 70 minus 63. You don't need to do that. They haven't asked you how much more, they've just said, have they got enough? And you can clearly see that 70 is more than 63. You don't need to do anything on the calculator. Or you, you can just stop there. Question 21. Wendy has bought a hot tub for her garden and wants to fill it with water. A diagram of the hot tub can be seen below. So we've got 2.2 metres across, 1.9 metres uh, Kind of what width and 0 0.9 meters high. She's going to use a hose pipe that will fill the hot tub with 0 0.026 meters cubed of water per minute. Calculate how long it will take Wendy to fill the hot tub using this hose pipe. Give your answer to the nearest minute. Okay, so it sounds quite complicated, but essentially what we need to do is work out what the volume of the hot tub is and then see how many of these go into it and that will tell us how many minutes it will take. So the volume is the length times the width times the height. So that's going to be 2.2 times 1.9 times 0 0.9. And we get 3.762 and that's meters Cubed. Okay, so we want to know how many minutes. So if it's this amount of water going in every minute, well then we're just going to say 3.762 divided by 0 0.026. It doesn't matter that the numbers look a bit weird and they're decimals and got a few decimal places. We're going to divide that by 0 0.026. And we get 144.6923, and that's minutes. It says give your answer to the nearest minute. So 144.69, well, well, the nearest minute, th these are our minutes, 144. So we look at the next digit, which is the six. Is it five or more? Yes. So we round up to 145. Minutes. Now you might be tempted to turn it into hours and minutes, but it hasn't asked for that. It says give your answer to the nearest minute, so I would keep it just in minutes.
And question 22. Denise works at a cafe and works as a cleaner. The current working hours are listed in the table below. So on Monday, she works in the cafe for these hours with a 30 minute break. Tuesday in the cafe again. Wednesday, day off. Thursday, she works as a cleaner. Different hours, different break, and so on. Denise is not paid for her break times and she earns £9.10p per hour working at the cafe. She earns 20% more per hour working as a cleaner. Uh, and if Denise works as a cleaner on a weekend, she gets paid an additional £20. Work out how much Denise earns in a week. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to split this up into jobs, I think. So let's say her cafe jobs. Well, on Monday... She works from 7.30 to, well, they're doing it as 1.300. So, or 7.30, be one hour to 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30. And the break would take us up to 13. So it's five full hours. Five hours. Okay. And she gets paid... Oh, actually, let's do all of the cafe ones. So she gets five hours there. On Tuesday, nine till 1,500 hours. So nine to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's six hours, but a 30-minute break. So that's half an hour less. So instead of six hours, it's going to be 5.5 or five and a half hours. And then she also works at the cafe on Friday, 7 to 1400 hours. So 7 to 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's 7 hours. But she has a 45 minute break. Or well, think of this as 3 quarters of an hour. So we said 7 hours. If we take off three quarters, 0.75, we're left with 6.25 hours. Okay. So you could do these one at a time, but I, I, this might seem more complicated, but I think overall it's, it's a nice way of doing it. So we've got 6.25 plus 5.5 plus 5. So in total, she works... 16.75 hours in the cafe and she gets paid £9.10 p. which gives us 152 point or 425 but this is money so we can only have two decimal places so for two the five it's five or more, so we round that up to four, three. So that's the cafe. Now we're going to work out our cleaner jobs. Now remember the cleaner, if she works at a weekend, she gets paid an additional 20. So I'm going to do, I'm going to work out uh, how much she gets as a cleaner, but just on a weekday. Okay, so a weekday she just works on Thursday. So ten to sixteen hundred. So from ten to eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that's six hours. But again we take off three quarters of an hour break again. So remember six minus three quarters, which is zero point seven five. So she works 5.25 hours so five and a quarter hours and she gets paid 20% more as a cleaner so she gets the nine pound ten 20% 20 more I'm going to multiply that by 1.2 this is our 20% 
So we're increasing it by 20%. If you're not comfortable with, it, with this, what you can do is work this out, then find 20% of it and add it on. But what this is doing is doing it all in one go. So 5.25 times nine pounds, 10. So this is the point, then you could work out 20% and add it on. Or what I'm saying is if you do times 1.2, it's keeping the whole 100% and adding on the extra 20%. And we get 57 pounds and 33p. Now, if she works as a cleaner at the weekend, well, she's working 11.30 to 14.30. So from 11.30 to 12.30, 13.30, 14.30. So that's three hours, no break. So we multiplied that by £9.10. Then we have the extra 20%. And then we're going to add on our extra £20. So 3 times £9.10. Add on the extra 20%. Again, you can work out 20% and add it on separately. And then we add on our bonus £20. £52.76. So in total, we just need to add these three together. So £152.43 plus £57.33 plus £52.76. And we get £262.52. So I know I've done something a little bit more complex here by doing the 1.2. But as I say, if you want to just work out the hours on their own, then work out 20% of that and add it on, you'll find that you get to the same place. But if you can get used to doing it this way, you will find it's more efficient and it will help you, especially when you go on to level 2 afterwards. So that's the end of the paper. Hope you found it helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. Do like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you get updates when I add more things, uh, more videos, uh, ask any questions, and hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much.